Welcome to this episode of the This Is Wayne podcast. Today is just me ranting on about how I have created a few income streams and hopefully it may help you guys uh, create an idea that can help you guys bring in some additional income. Um, as in life, anything that is f- quick and easy generally isn't 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 going to work. Um, so this is not going to be a get rich quick scheme. Uh, everything that I've done has taken time, effort, um, and a lot of persistence to make it worthwhile. Uh, I just wanted to make that very clear from the beginning. Um, I, I generally don't believe that being a plumber or heating engineer or, or any, any, any trade based business is ever going to make you financially free. I just don't think it's possible, but what it will do is it will act as a vehicle to make make some decent money. And if you use that money correctly, you, you know, you can pursue different ventures, you can take some risks um, and hopefully make, make some serious money. Um, there's a fact that the average millionaire on average has seven income streams. So, you know, that's a, that's a common denominator in all millionaires. Uh, so that's worth paying attention to. Um, there's, there's sort of been five basic sort of principles that I've used with creating my income streams that I've currently got. Uh, and they are do something that is utilizing your current skill set. So make it similar to your, to what you're currently doing. So you don't have to go start from zero. You know, if you can start something that is related to your current business it's a lot easier you've got the background knowledge the connections the the resources to do a lot more um you don't want to create something that initially requires 100 percent of your attention because obviously if it's not going to make money at the beginning and you still need to pay your your overheads and your bills you know you need something that 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 is detachable from your day-to-day that you can put a bit of effort in over a, a longer period of time to see some results. It's for me, it's key that you have a real passion for whichever, whichever option that you're going to go with. Um, cause if you don't have passion about it, you know, you're not really going to put the time in when it's not going to be making money. So that's a key point. Um, you've got to be patient. Nothing happens quickly. You know, it's all about persistence, baby steps moving forward. You know, if you could gain an inch a day, before you know it, you're miles down the street. So patience is a virtue. <laughs> um, you want to ideally create something that in the future could be outsourced. Uh, what I mean by outsourced is, again, you don't want it to, this is an additional income stream that I'm talking about. So it's not something that that's that you want to replace your full-time job. This is just something that can bring in some money on the side. Over time, you know, it might create, it might be, grow into something that, will become a full-time job but if you want something that that for me that can easily be outsourced and let you focus on making some good money in the industry that you that you're currently in um so yeah so they're sort of the five rules that i've sort of followed I thought the first one that i created it was an unconscious rule but looking back at the the ones that i've created that they're certainly five rules that i've stuck to um so uh what i'm going to do is i'm just going to explain to you guys what I've done, uh, how I've done it. Um, I'm not going to be saying it's right or wrong, you know, um, it's just the way that I've done it and hopefully it may help you guys create something yourself. So the first one that I did, which was uh, quite simple, um, it was basically selling carbon monoxide alarms. So when I started my own business, uh, when I left my, my full-time employed job, I contracted to British Gas. And I soon realized that they sell a lot of carbon monoxide alarms. And once I let, I was only at British Gas for sort of three months, something like that. Um, But in that three months, I saw that selling carbon monoxide alarms was obviously worth their while because they they were, you know, at the meetings and stuff, they pushed us to sell them and and we made some good money on it. So when I set up up on my own, um, it triggered in my mind, oh, I had to, well, you know, why can't I just sell them to my customers? You know, rather than make the six quid on kudos points or whatever it was when I was at British Gas, I could be making the full margin on it. So I 
did some research and I found that the, they, I found the Honeywell distributor for the UK. It uh, well, wasn't that hard, you know, half hours worth of Googling and, and sending emails. And I managed to find the company that is the UK distribution. So I reached out to them and sort of spoke to them and said, look, I'm, I'm only small work. I, I can't order lots, but obviously the price needs to be competitive. Um, so we did a deal and I, I ordered 50, you know, so it wasn't a massive financial risk, but I still had 50 carbon monoxide alarms that I needed to sell. So at first, the, the initial plan was just to sell them to my clients. And in the first month, I sold probably 20, 25 of them. Um, and I listed some online and, and they sold just as quick. So I thought, hmm, okay, so I've sold 50. You know, uh, can't remember the exact margins on it back then, but I'll get, I'll touch on that in a little bit. Um, yeah, so I thought, mm, okay, hang about. I might be onto something here. So w within three months of starting, I was ordering 2,000 carbon monoxide alarms at a time. And um, my poor wife was having to pack them and, and post them. And she looked like Santa Claus <laughs> taking the sacks down to the uh, Royal Mail. Um, but she, we, to be fair, we were only spending probably three or four hours a week on it. Um, so we'd get the orders and then on the Thursday, she would pack the orders up from that week, take them to the post office and post them off. So it, it was very, very simple stuff. Um, but then I thought, mm, okay, so she's having to lug all these down. We're selling quite a lot of volume here. So I outsourced the picking and packing. So all I, by sort of six months in, all I was doing was placing an order, taking delivery of 2000 and then I was delivering them to the local Amazon factory. So I literally would deliver them myself, hand them over, and then that was all I had to do. Uh, Amazon did everything else. So as the orders come in, they picked, packed, sent, and dealt with, dealt with everything. So all I had to do was on probably once every few weeks was take a few boxes, 20 minutes down the road, hand them in and the rest was being looked after and unbelievable unbelievably in probably 10 months we sold over 150,000 pounds worth of carbon monoxide alarms it was it was it was crazy you know I just could not believe the volume of sales it like, it was just phenomenal and that netted me a net profit of a, sort of somewhere around 30 grand and um you know, the most, the most amount of time I ever spent on it in, in the 10 months that I did it was four hours a week. That was the very most, but for half that time, I was only actually spending sort of half hour to an hour. Um, and I made 30 grand, but sadly, um, I got out muscled. So Amazon, obviously, obviously they were doing it. They ended up selling the item themselves. So they sort of, uh, they sort of hoodwinked me out which was a bit of a gutter, but, um, anyway, I still made 30 grand profit, uh, and I pumped that into a different business venture, which I'm not going to go into in today's podcast. Um, but yeah, so that from a simple idea within 10 months, I made 30,000 pounds for a few hours work a week. It was, it was unbelievable really. Um, so that, that there's, there's an idea for you, you know, it might not be carbon monoxide alarms. It could, could be any, anything to do with our trade. C could you look to source them at a decent rate and then sell them on, you know, it's just, just a, another idea for you. Um, the next income stream come from, again, it linked to, to, to my plumbing business. It was service plans. So again, I looked at British gas and thought, why are they so successful? Why do they make so much money? And service plans are obviously their main, their main source of, of revenue. So I thought, shit, how am I going to do this? I'm a small company at that point. I only had a, you know, a handful of engineers, um, and didn't really know much about anything really. I was just sort of winging it day by day. Um, but what I, what I did is I just did it, you know, I overcome the fear of not knowing. And I just sort of learned as I, as I went along, um, and slowly, you know, it was a slow process. I, I slowly built up the numbers that were coming in, um, and signing up to the contracts. And over time that, that has grown and grown and grown. 
and brings me in a, a fair decent amount of money every month. Obviously, I, I do have to honour the, the contract, so I have to go out and service the boilers. But what it gives me is a monthly income. And being being a small business owner, you know how unregular our money can be. One month we can earn thousands. The next month we, we might not have hardly any money in the bank or we're waiting six months to get paid from a big contract or whatever it might be. Service contracts allows you to get money coming in regularly. You can see it coming in month on month. And if you're pushing them, you know, month on month, you're, you're increasing your monthly passive income from it. For me, any plumbing and heating business service plans is a must. You know, you can do it as simple as just literally a service only plan. So you've got no risk, no exposure to parts or anything like that. And then obviously build on your confidence and develop it into a, a more comprehensive package. But you're, you'll be in control. You can do it as slowly or as fast as you like and take as, as little risk or as much risk as you like. Um, if you want any more information on service plans, I do have a training package on it. So just message me and we can sort you out uh, a deal on that if you're interested. But we're going to move on to uh, my, my other income stream which is a bit of a, a bit of a curveball, to be honest. It's, um, it's definitely a passion, or it was a passion of mine, so that's what led me down that route. Uh, yeah, so this income stream was, um, basically, uh, it is, all it is is a Facebook page. That, that, that is a simple, in, in simple terms, it's a Facebook page. And at the time, Brexit was the, the, the vote to leave was, was happening, and there was lots and lots of activity online with people talking about the right reasons to stay, the reasons to leave. It, it was it was a hot, hot topic. And I, I was uh, passionate about it. So I created a Facebook page. At first, you know, I wasn't it wasn't intended to be an income stream. But in the back of my mind, I sort of thought, well, potentially, you know, I could I could I could leverage this at some point. And over time, it grew and grew and grew. It, it was ridiculous. So at first, all I was doing was posting memes, uh, posting news stories that were like the, were in the Daily Mail or the Telegraph or whatever, you know, just all over the Internet. I was sharing it, uh, putting my two pennies worth in, and, and, it, and it was just getting bigger and bigger. We were gaining thousands and thousands of likes week on week, and it, it, was, it was just unbelievable. As the page grew, I thought, okay, hang about here. I can make some money here. I've got thousands and thousands of followers. So what I decided to do was create my own website. So I created a basic, very basic WordPress website. Probably took me an hour, you know, two hours max. I had Google ads embedded in there. And what I would do is I would simply see what was hot topic for the day. And I'd write a couple of articles sort of inspired by the mainstream news uh, post them into my website and then share them on my Facebook, my Facebook page. And then obviously people would see the story. They'd click on the page, uh, click on the story. And then they, the, I would, I would earn revenue from the ads that were surrounding the article and God, it was making some decent, decent money. Do you know, one month I net profited 5,000 pounds from it. That was the general election month, um, just after Brexit. So, do you know, it's, it, that wasn't what I was getting every month, but 5,000 pounds. And again, I was only doing, oh gosh, I'd say an maximum an hour a day's work, putting the content together and then posting it out. And it was bringing in some serious, serious money. What I found with this one, though, was that the stories were getting harder for me to write. I was losing my passion for it to a point. So I, at that point, I thought, OK, well, I don't want to lose the, the income stream. So what can I do to maintain it? So I simply made a deal with another Facebook page that was doing the same. And I decided that I didn't want to be hands on in it at all. I wanted a totally hands off approach. Uh, for two reasons. One, because I didn't want to spend the time on it. And two, I found that the news, reading the news and everything like that, it was just getting me in an, it, into a negative state, you know, reading all the bad points from both sides of the argument. And uh, yeah, so I, I made the decision that I didn't want to be involved in it, but I didn't want to lose the income stream. So I did a deal with another page and we simply, 
I set it up. So I got a 20% commission from mine and his page. So he would do all the work, post them on his page and post them on my page. And I would just sit back and take a 20% royalty effectively. And that's what we've been doing for, God, over 18 months. Um, and on average, that, that the commission that I've got has been at least a £1,000, I'd say, on average a month. And I literally now do nothing to do with it. I literally simply check the stats. <laughs> that is all I do, just to check the page is still growing. I, we're currently at, 106, at 176,000 likes and followers. So I have access to this big, huge pool of people. And the guy that I've teamed up with simply does the articles, does all the hard work, posts it out. He gets the lion's share, you know, um, which is fair. He's putting the time and effort in. And to put this into context, he's a 19-year-old. He may, may have turned 20 this year, actually, so he might be 20. But when we started, he was 19 at university. And he was earning, he, well, he is earning thousands, absolute thousands a month from sitting in his dormitory at university writing articles and he's not even with he's not even sourcing the articles himself all, all he does is reads the news uh picks a story and then writes it in his own way so he's not copying it so but he's just using it for inspiration so he doesn't even leave the house to get the story um and then he presses a few buttons and posts it out and away it goes across the internet it's it's phenomenal the power that that the internet has to make money is is just phenomenal absolutely phenomenal um so yeah so they're they're, they're my free income streams that i've created that have been passive and and residual uh the so i, I still have the service plans and i still have the news website so that is you know that 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 pays my mortgage and my and my basic bills month after month before I've even woken up you know it's a phenomenal position to be in and it's it's shown me how you can make money you don't have to work eight till six every day to make money you can make money leveraging the tools and the uh, and the the angles that you can create in the modern world so I really really hope that me explaining to you what I've done and how I've done it so far will inspire you to try and create something yourself. Um, I'll go back to the five rules that I, that I have sort of followed in doing it. And I, I strongly think if you write these rules down, you tick through them stuff that, that meets that criteria, you can create something similar. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. You have to be willing to spend a bit of spare time, doing the work you, the, the, you know you have to do the work now to be able to leverage that work in the future so then rules were start off with something similar to your current business so you can use your skill sets that you already have and and leverage that into the new venture you want something that doesn't require your whole attention all the time because if if that's the case it's then gonna it's not going to be an additional income it's going to have to replace your current income so you need something that can be a bit hands-off uh, having a passion for something is to me is a must because if you're going to be spending your your downtime putting some effort in you, you want it to be based around something that is a real passion for you the fourth one was being patient so the the patient patience is the biggest 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 thing when i was doing the facebook page my wife kept saying to me, you're wasting all your time on here. What are you doing? You're, you're, not, you're not achieving anything. You're not, not doing anything. And I, I, I would argue that I was doing things in, in two aspects. I was reaching, I still am reaching between four and six million people a month with the content that's created and published through my, my page. So that alone, you know, that means I was having some influence on, on the world, which was, which, which, which was, was a good thing. Uh, but what I was kept saying to her is that we've got to be patient. It will make money. I, I'll find a way to make it make money. And she didn't believe me. You know, the family just thought I wasted my time doing it. Uh, but now, you know, <laughs> like I say, you've, I've, I've already told you how much it makes. Um, and now I'm reaping the benefits. You know, I don't have to get up every morning thinking, how am I paying my mortgage? Because it's paid. You know, I don't have to think about how I'm going to cover my council tax and uh, gas and electric because it's paid 
from my, my income streams. So being patient, I cannot stress that one enough. Spend a small amount of time every day or every week, whatever you want to do. And over time, that will compound and compound and compound. Um, and then the fifth one was the ability to outsource. So unless you want a total career change, then obviously then it doesn't need to be able to be outsourced. You can move into it and, and do it day to day. But for me, this was all about creating additional income. Um, so the ability to be able to outsource it and make it hands off from my point of view was, was a huge part. Um, I've got a few more that I'm doing, which I can't really go into too much detail about, but I'll do that in a future podcast. Uh, I really hope that this maybe has inspired you guys to do something for yourself. Um, if you think anyone would benefit from listening, please share it and come make sure that you find us on Facebook. My page is This Is Wayne. Uh, just search out on Facebook or Twitter or wherever it is you want to follow me. Um, yeah, so have a great day. Goodbye.